What up, Roscoe? Hey, bitches! It is the finale! Ah! I'm so excited for Maybe. tonight. But I am more excited for our new patio furniture! Do get a new seat! It feels so good. Oh, yeah, they're very comfortable, too. We, we tested them out. Let's Hopefully break they're YouTube in. approved. Hello, YouTube. Hi. If you haven't, like, click, and subscribe. I just want to start off by saying hello to one of our YouTube subscribers. It's her 16th birthday. Happy birthday to Aspen, and thank you so much for watching us. Yes. And thank all of you for watching us. Let's kick this thing off. Are you ready? Woo! -hoo! Joining us all the way from season six and all star six, give it up for the stunning TKB Trinity K. Bonet. Hi. 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 Yeah. Hi. <laughs> She's back. Okay, shut up. <laughs> and next, please welcome to the stage. You all know her, you love her, you can catch her Drag Race Live in Las Vegas. Please give it up for Naomi, Naomi Smalls! <laughs> legs. It's legs. All the legs. <laughs> Well, let's have a let's seat. Let's have a seat. One, two, three. Ooh, it's, it's mm. nice. Well, no, wait Y'all look confused. <laughs> no more power. Oh, yeah. Down. Unfortunately, um, LaGanja will not be joining us tonight. Um, she had some flight issues, so blame it on the airlines, okay? You ain't, don't feel bad. Just give me, her to, give me the money. <laughs> okay? And Y'all, any blunts you planned on smoking, I will take those. I will politely give those to LaGanja afterwards. Yeah. Well, welcome back, divas. Y'all both haven't been here since um, an All-Star 6 viewing party. How have things been since then for either of us? You were oh. on it. <laughs> what? Me? Yeah, we were, we were here talking about, right? Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, Naomi, I think you were here episode yeah. one or two. One, two? Yeah. And then, oh, no, it was one and two and two untucks. Let's go. It was a lot. It was a very long night. It was a, yeah. It was the double episode day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Chicago, I mean, uh, Las Vegas, we've both done two. Yeah, I was in Las Vegas. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Well, I lost, if we don't remember that. You know, some shit happened, unfortunately. Um, but no, I got the opportunity to go to Vegas, which has been a life changer for me and I can't wait to go back. <laughs> I miss it oh so much. But um yeah. So yeah. far so good I guess. And Naomi, you were one of the inaugural Vegas girls, is that correct? Me and Derek Barry are the last bitches standing. <laughs> yes. From yeah. The first yeah. cycle. Wait, so it's just a show of y'all fighting and doing numbers? What is going on? <laughs> that is so 2016. <laughs> No, Derek Barry is my religion at this point. Like, literally, I, that's like my, I don't consider her like a drag friend. She's like family. She's like Aww, best friend, yeah. live, obsessed with her. Yes, make yeah. some noise for that, Roscoe. It's fuck you. Yeah. But I miss Chicago so much, and I've been here all week just like tiptoeing around. If you see some scarecrow back in Halstead, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's me, clumsily bar hopping. I'm so excited to be here. Hell yeah. Now we're coming to the finale of our All-Stars All-Winner season. It's been like so magical just seeing all these winners give everything they have. How do you think your respective winners of your original seasons would have done on this, uh, Bob and Bianca? <laughs> well, just, just my opinion, considering I think we all can agree that there has been nothing but compliments the whole season. Yes, sure. Nobody has, you know, even when we was like, now nah, bitch, y'all trying it. You know, it was never brought up. They only praised them on the positives. So I think that everybody collectively would have did well, but it would have, Jesus, to be able to have seen that. It would have been too good for TV. Yeah. <laughs> like, it would have been too good for TV. And there's a lot of other winners across the, I think, the world that they could possibly do the same thing over again and, Give them the opportunity to go against the Bobs and the Biancas. There's, you know, 
Hell, maybe even Tyra. <laughs> That'd be a lovely I don't, comeback. She won. Yes, she did. She, she won. Did. You know, let's call a spade a spade. Ooh. It's James. <laughs> it, is, it is James. Excuse me. Because we should, don't, nobody don't send this part to her, please. <laughs> no, no, it's crazy that they're doing a winter season without Bob, Bianca, and Violet. Like, it's insane. You definitely have, like, my favorites in there, too. It's, like, Monet, of course. Do we love Monet here? Oh, fuck yes. <laughs> the opera? <laughs> Ate that. Um, but honestly, it's just so fierce to see, like, the biggest budget. It's pretty much, it really is the best drag show of all time with the biggest budget and, like, the coolest queens. Except for Bob, Violet, and Bianca. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, on that note, Roscoe's, are we ready to start this finale? Yeah. All right, don't forget to drink up. We've got House of Love cocktails and food. Uh, so let's take it away, Mikey. All right. Oh, my God. I am laughing so hard already. <laughs> yeah, that was just to get them to have a good time. I didn't, they didn't do a winner, so that was just like, here's one last have a good time in the workroom before we get serious with these lip syncs, I feel like. What was Jinx giving? N uh, Natasha Leone, her she, Snatch Game character. That's what she was giving. Now, we're about to get into the Lollapurooza, and thankfully... Wait, if I hear that one more time tonight, I'm going to have to drink to it. <laughs> Take a shot every time it's said. Cheers to that. Okay. Um, thankfully, um, Naomi was one of the first individuals to do the Lollapurooza lip sync on season four, correct? On All Stars 4, yeah. yes. Um, were you nervous at all? Were you like, nope, lip sync is what I do? Oh, no, I was very nervous. I'm very nervous every single time I get on stage. Like, I'm, like, literally a shaking chihuahua until I step foot on stage. And even then, I'm still shaking. But um, I had a feeling, like, Latrice was going to pick me for the Lollapurooza, and I had a feeling they really wanted her back in, so I was, like, shitting bricks. <laughs> um, but I do know I could outperform all those bitches up there, too, hey. at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I don't know what the producers want. We'll see. Now, on the other hand, Trinity, you got to pretty much witness a Lollapurooza with Silky taking out everyone in that last episode. Cut. <laughs> Cut. Ooh. Trinity is the lip sync assassin. Though. I mean, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Vibology with the door. What a man. Yeah. Oh, she ate yeah. that. All of them. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. How was it watching Silky do all that? from your perspective. Oh but <laughs> let's talk about Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, well, everything that you saw from me was authentic. I was upset because I knew what that meant for me, you know? Um, but after that first performance, she just had gimmick after gimmick after gimmick. And it was feeding us alcohol, finally. <laughs> they, they, they let us drink liquor that day. after Because we was in drag all day long, so they, that's how they get you. You know, they awful. <laughs> but no, so yeah. Um, and it was just like performance after performance. After the second performance, I was up on my feet. They, all them like slow emotions was just that first performance, because I was mad. But after the second performance, I was fine. You know? And she really like set the standard as to like, taking performances to another level and telling a story. I always say that music and, you know, music and performances are stories. We tell stories within our garments and in our bodies, our movements, our emotions. And she was able to capitalize on all of those different elements. So I, I say that she is an assassin as well. I'm, I think that there's many assassins. I'm not the assassin. There are many girls who have made me motherfucking know it. <laughs> so, yeah. Hell yeah. I guess. Or we could just go with what Naomi said. <laughs> Cut. Cut. <laughs> what was the hardest part of doing the, li like, the lip sync? Like, were you, were you in your head doing it, or were you just trying to really get out that, the performance, like, oh, shit, like, this is happening? Like, what, what was the raw emotion for you when that was going on? Because it has to be extremely hard. And you do, like, you don't know where you're gonna go. How, like, it's just, I wanna know, like, really, like, what the fuck you were thinking. Um, I was listening to every, because we didn't know which song we were gonna do. I think there was, like, four options or something like that. And I didn't know what song I was gonna do. And I definitely do not know RuPaul's songs, like, the back of my hand. Like, I'm just not that girl. Um, 
<laughs> I know a few. I know I bring the beat. That one slaps. Um, supermodel. All these songs that were not in the deal or no deal boxes. So I made sure to listen in my headphones the entire time um, while I was painting. And the gag is, this is the fucking gag. You listen to all those songs and they bring out the suitcases and you're like, ooh, I don't know what I'm gonna get. All those suitcases are filled with the exact same thing. Like, Oh God, I don't know who ah, watches this. Yes, Everyone please. watches this, sorry. <laughs> this is um, what you're here for, to tell so us the, the truth. I, I think I talked about song. this with, when I, like, on Bob's channel as well, but um, I remember I was like wearing this long, beautiful hair, of course, <laughs> and I went backstage to grab my brush before I went out for the lip sync, and I looked down, and I saw them putting adrenaline in each suitcase, and I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> Here we go. But I got gooped. I got fucking gooped. And Drag Race is one of those things that I don't necessarily um, get to. At, at the point of All Stars, I wasn't confused by like Hollywood and TV. I thought I had been like, ah, I got this. I know show business. And I was like, fuck, they got me. They made me stress and listen to Kitty Girl for three fucking hours. They really got the doll. That's it's it's an it's a awful place. <laughs> like, y'all y'all just don't get it. It's not, it's not what you think. Thank God you get to meet us after the fact and we're fabulous, but it's awful. They torture us, okay? I'm going to give a damn. The shit on camera, I done said it. It is true. But look what you get. They, they, have, they have built and made some amazing girls, you know, off of us wanting to be just the absolute best. And they taking that same energy and taking it on the world, the road to work the world and the clubs and, and the music and all of that. So it's an awful place. <laughs> I always, I always say that because we get to have you guys here um, with all of your talent and we watch you and you don't have to win to be amazing. You're already amazing. What makes you amazing is going out there and doing what you love to do and showing the world your talent because we can only see so much when you're on TV. Um, I still feel like a loser. <laughs> no, I, think, I think it's okay to be a loser. It's just factual. But I, 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 lo I lost. Two. We're watching the winners, <laughs> and I'm in <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> I was there. Losing I was, is the new. I was just winning. gonna say you perform that song every night in Vegas, don't you? Losing is the yeah, new. Yeah, I'm reminded of it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. That's no, okay. Huh. I'm here with y'all. It's the business, girl. Right? Winning at life. Show business. Yeah. Let's jump back into the show. <laughs> well, uh, there was some beauty on there. Those were amazing. All right, shout it out. Who stood out? Who'd you love? Jada. Raja. I agree. All of them. Yes. <laughs> um, no, for y'all, how does it feel when y'all are on the runway and you know your shit don't stink? They can't tell you nothing. Everything is correct. What is that moment like? No, we have to talk about the looks. <laughs> well, let's freshen our brain. Okay, let's do our little fashion photo review real okay. quick. Let's go. All right, who do we love? Um, starting from the top, we had Jada coming out. Yes. What type Gorgeous. Of, what type of fringe was that? I'm beaded. Just, beaded fringe. Bead money. Okay, it looked lovely. So uh, mature so, for her. I think of J yeah. Jada being such a young girl. Mm -hmm. That was really expensive and really cute, mm -hmm. but definitely older for her. Okay, I see that. I but see I like that. the Dorothy Dandridge that yeah, yeah. was fierce. And then after that, we had Raja, which was... Uh, eight. What I expected. Eight. Um, Evie coming up next with the cake. That was sickening. It had wheels on it. I was wondering how that yeah, was I was wondering going how it was going, and then when she, she turned at the end, I saw the wheel. That was cool. In one of her 12 boxes she brought with her. The slow-mo take was fierce. Yes. But it was a little wobbly. You, you saw? You saw yeah. a little wobble? Yeah. It was like a wedding cake from a cheap bakery. <laughs> was it? Continue. It was a little wobbly. Roscoe's will let you know, bitch. Quickly. Like they let us know how much you loved Vivian's Vivian. look, right? Ooh. Y'all went. <laughs> you heard him? It wasn't even crickets. It was just like. No, yeah. There is, yeah, like. What was it? Why didn't you guys like it? 
I hear basic. I hear boring. You've seen Did someone Vivian. say the same wig from last? You don't have to wear a rhinestone to shine. I thought the fat. I thought it looked great. I thought it was pretty. She had these expensive feathers and stuff. All right, Jinx giving the Joan of Arc um, Soul Calibur fighter character. <laughs> it was giving Cassandra Sophia, if you know your Soul Calibur. Um, the hair was cool. <laughs> and, and so was like the metal looking thing, or iron, or steel, or breastplate. Whatever is matte. Breastplate? Ar- armor? Are you, te- are you telling me about drag? Because <laughs> that's not a breastplate. <laughs> All right, and Wait, then. Oh. Go ahead, Batty. Is that something that she would wear or they would wear when they go LARPing? Yeah, yeah actually, to bring yeah. it all back, it really... <laughs> okay, so... Work. I'm learning. Uh... <laughs> okay. Um, who do we have left? Forgive me. Uh, oh. Shay and Monet. Um, let's start with Shay. That was, seemed very, that was a very classic silhouette of hers. I feel like we saw something similar earlier this season, but the hips were not as grand as they were for this. This was really gorgeous. I love the color combo. I thought that was really pretty. And then closing it But out. did you like the dress? Yeah, I love the dress. Okay, yeah. The dress was fierce. I, I, the hair... Uh, <laughs> for finale... <laughs> not, it can be short, but it was just like... It was short and out of the bag. It was short and literally brushed to the side out of the bag. This is not out of the bag. Okay, I, I will, I'll it go to... Cu- I mean, I packed it here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll but go, I'll go to bat. Monet was saying they were running out of outfits, so Trinity sewed her stuff. Maybe she was running out of wigs, and the pussycat was the most reliable thing for no, the finale. That, that pussycat could be something. I mean, she was. If you br- like brush it, tease it, cut it. <laughs> something. Also, like... A, a pixie that doesn't show your hairline as a winner. It's a little. Okay. I, I, I thought I don't everybody looked nice. I understand why that's so tight. <laughs> beautiful gowns, beautiful gowns. I, I, yeah, I didn't get a chance to say that. The nothing, gown was I just, gorgeous. I, I, thought every, I thought everybody was a perfect representation of who they really are. Hands I didn't down. see, like, I've seen Shay in short little pixie cut just because quite often that is a representation of who she is she she if she was a woman she probably would have that cut all the fucking time you know like i see her in that often and and jada is an old spirit in her drag and like you know and evie is a fucking public cake i don't know (laughs) and i don't know i just saw like i had a smile on my face the whole time and even with the vivian that's who she is. If you follow her drag, it's a representation of herself. So, I mean, I just thought everybody looked nice. Uh, who are you scared of? Bitch, look how I'm dressed. Who the fuck should I be scared of? Yeah, bitch, I'm scared of you. You should be. <laughs> you, you should be. Okay. It's bitch, okay. It's okay I got to, to come out of sneakers. I don't know who gonna run up on me. <laughs> bitch. Bitch, <I'm>, what's up? <laughs> Nah. <laughs> I think you it's okay to say us. if we like or don't like something. I didn't like the wig. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no. The wig, no, I no the wig didn't go with it. <laughs> but I didn't, I said I didn't feel the need to say nothing Roll because you had already tape. said something. I didn't agree with you. The wig was awful. <laughs> yeah, but that's, the, that's her shit. She wear them a lot. So I figure, you know, that so she was just wear it herself. So if you wear it a lot, it it's should shit. be bomb as fuck, bitch. Oh. If you wear it a lot, it should be bomb as fuck. You right, sis. I ain't arguing with you about it. <laughs> I argue with you. I'm really passionate about hair, if you can't tell. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> okay, and then we had Trinity the Tuck. Uh, Same thing. That, that, I saw that. Tr- oh, no, well, we she's can, been we, fucking the runway up the whole season. Yeah. That was, I, I will give her that. She is the most At this men. point, we, skip, you know? we skipped over Monet. Monet was fierce. And yeah. then Monet, I was, she was the last one that came out. Did you guys like the Nude Illusion? No. It was a pretty good match. It yeah. was a pretty good match, yeah. Yeah. And I like the bald head. Yes, when she wears her bald head, she She, looks so ethereal. She is like the prettiest bitch ever. Bomb skin. Body. And also, like, that aside, I think Monet Exchange is one of the most likable people ever. Yeah. Which is like her super power. Her super power. All right, well, let's jump back in and see the lip sync Lollapurooza Smackdown. Oh, my thoughts on Trinity? Meh. 
What in the actual fuck what the did fuck you just was watch? That? What are we watching on this day? Bitch, I am so confused right now. It's giving camp, and I'm here for she it. She fully said, thank you, I love you, now leave the stage. Cause bitch, I have to do a number. Let me, bitch. That's why they left. Let me tell you something. That's why I love my mama though. <laughs> bitch, bye, my turn. I got a whole music video I'm gonna do. Y'all need to go. That was ball shit. They gonna cut that and put that on YouTube and that's it. That's a single right there and y'all gonna download it. That, look, that's chill, boss. Bitch, I, I need me a television show. That was good. That was amazing. I love that the queens finally had a chance to all speak to her in front of each other and be grateful for this experience because truly, and I know that you all here are very grateful to have such a, a wonderful television show to be able to watch. I know that they didn't show a lot of the negative. They showed the positive to praise them because they are all winners, but I truly believe that they deserve that. So I'm very, very no, happy. No, what, what, see, but what y'all don't know is, is that there really isn't any negative. Everybody that has gone on Drag Race is equally amazing at what they do. They just edit it in a way where it makes it look like you, you fuck up one time. You can, you can have did good the first time and they make you do two more takes and you fuck up the third time and that's the one. They have power. They can narrate the story. We're all amazing. It's always like that. We all come with amazing drag. Let everybody do the whole fucking season. You get what I'm saying? It's very true. That I, I don't even want to watch Drag Race any other way because I would like much it. rather fall in love with each and every girl there than to pick a fucking side. Caramel and I were talking about this earlier prior to you arriving, and we wanted to ask you, the both of you, about the, how you thought the theory of this with keeping all the contestants through the whole time. Because we think it's great because you get to not only learn about them, but you get to see what they actually brought. How do you feel about that? I hate it. I get home. it for winners. I absolutely get it for winners, but it takes it. It's not a competition if everyone gets to stay until the end. But what if they do like stars like they did? Okay, maybe some like cutthroat detail of like taking them away, like of the power. Just yes. some, like okay. Ooh, to steal know? stars? That'd be messy, bitch. No, I don't want to see everyone until the end. <laughs> like I don't for me. Okay. For me. For me. Um, I don't need to see everyone go to the end. I'll just like scroll on their Instagram and see what they brought. Well, with this, with the introduction of this format, we feel like there may be one, another one, or would they put them all in a house? Do you think y'all could be in a house with other drag queens and compete? Bitch, put me in yeah. a house? You say, yeah. As long as we got some weed. I, I'm not, I... <sighs> if that's the gig, sure. Yeah, if that's the gig, absolutely. I, you can put me anywhere. I'm gonna make myself comfortable anywhere I go. First of all. She adapts. I, I didn't, I'm not a, I do drag because bitch, this is my drug of choice. Like this is my addiction. I, I did it once and I'm stuck, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a part of who I've become. So I have not allowed anybody to uh, pull me out of my artistry enough to feel like I can't be me and praise you at the same time. EI me on season six. I was a cheerleader, not because I felt like I want, I had to be, like I genuinely enjoyed everybody else's drag. So I don't give a, we could be in a house, hotel, it doesn't make me any difference. You know, like what you present is what you present. I gotta try to do my absolute best. I don't know, I just, I'm not, I'm not competitive enough. Yeah, the spirit of competition <laughs> is different for you than I think it is a lot of other girls. Like Naomi, it's definitely very cutthroat. Like, yeah. She, but, but it's not a bad thing because that's how she perfects her crap. Right. You know, like, bitch, some, somebody, one of us gotta take this shit serious. <laughs> you know, like, I, I'm for real, like, I'm just making it through. I be gagging myself every time. Like, bitch, you actually did it again. You know, that's how I feel about me. But people like you, no, for real, but people like, like Naomi to me is head to toe a work of art. It's thought out, it's put together. I genuinely be just like, oh, okay, I feel I'm comfortable. You think head to toe, so I, and that's the part I love about the drag is because the perspective is different in every aspect. But we all in the end always come out looking in our shit, you know. It's a finishing product, it's a finished product. You have you to see wear it. red. You had to wear red. 
I know, we were upstairs and there, Sean was like, do you have anything black? And I was like, I had literally just smoked yeah. and I was like, what? Yeah. I was gonna t- I was gonna tell you you fucked up the mojo, but sorry. It's- Next time, bitch, put me in the black girl magic. Let's talk, bitch. <laughs> Leave me out. Oh, you're giving me talk some fish anyway. Like you sitting on the end in this us. <laughs> Hey. All right, can we go back to the show? Are you guys ready? RuPaul, Let's see. I never said it earlier. Oh. RuPaul ate that. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was good, and she yes. looks great. Does she not? Yes. She, she danced came out. hard enough that the fro can we moved. give it up for uh, the Ra- fro moved, bitch? Yeah. I was like, go off. Can we please give Raven in the hairstylist some love, please? please. Curtis, baby. Curtis on hair. Oh. Curtis does her hair now. I believe so. Oh, I'm not. Sh- I'm not sure, but Raven uh, just look at me them. talking like I know everything about drag. <laughs> oh, you leave that man alone. <laughs> he paid to be here. All right, let's go back. I mean, oh. the camera really didn't favor either one, so I honestly don't know about that one. It was very close. Who did they? No. It, who are y'all thinking? Raja. No, both of them. Both of them was bad. Yeah, but that song. But is, this song, yeah, they really couldn't turn up. You know, what I'm Trinity's kick. I mean, not Trinity. Uh, Jada's kick. Which one? She gave. Uh, it was. It was like. Yeah. <laughs> like, why, why, why would you put that right there? Uh, <laughs> I think that was Raja's. flip a coin. Right. I think that was Raja's, and that was what I saw of it. That was absolutely Evie's. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll find that out. That song was for Evie. Right? Yeah, no, she definitely had the salt and pepper hair, and I don't know what Viv was doing. Yeah, Cabbage that, patch. that one was definitely like a... This one is close. It just... I don't know. What do we think? Jada, if you think Jada, make some noise. I mean, I'm sorry, not Jada. If you think Raja, make some noise. So far, it feels like the, the song selections are have been uh, energy challenged. Like, they, like we, they, y'all put these people together because you know that they're gonna give the same type of energy. And that's not what I wanna see. No, bitch, you were supposed to give them, uh, give, what's, something. <laughs> if the next song is a pocket full of sunshine, I'm gonna have to go home. What's, what's, a, what's a powerful song? I don't know. Think about the most powerful dance song that you could think of and give that to Raja no and, and Jada. And let no me air? see what I can get. Well, Jada, that's how you determine who really has it, who's going to push it out. That was yeah, that's tip fair. money song. Like, that was I'm tip just money. walking around. No. If stop. it was dance, though, I think Jada would have ate Raja up. Of course she would have. So that's but they're doing levels because it's, it's levels. Like Vivian is, you know has her kooky way, and, and, and Evie is kooky, and then you turn around and you put, no, you put mother and daughter together. It was very that. It was No, that. now watch. What? Yeah, let's play it. Let's see what the T is. Oh, no, I think, by the way, I think any song can be performed. You just have to have a plan when you go into it. Watch the next couple songs we don't. I'm a little nervous for Trinity. <laughs> Not, not, not cable net. I'm nervous for uh, Trinity to talk. Because, bitch, don't fucking touch me during a lip sync. Do not touch me. Do not walk in front of me. I hate that shit. It's not a physical sport. Well, we're doing a lip sync tonight, all of us, so. Don't eat my ass. What was that? <laughs> what was that? All right, let's go. Let's see it. Let's see it. Boom, shaka, laka, laka, laka. These commercial breaks. Y'all know Monet and Trinity the ones that was fucking right. Yes, I was just about to say it. I actually heard it was the Viv. No, it makes that makes the most sense. Bitch, they won together, they toured together. It, it's everybody that got their dicks up by their friend by mistake oh, no. on a drunken night. Oh no. Maybe. Don't possibly. Say, don't say we. I didn't don't know. Say we. Well, yeah, let's say everybody. Thank you. But that's what happened with them. <laughs> And I'm telling also, you, that's what happened. I'm telling you. It was smart for their storyline to bring um, it was yeah, the two twinners back together again, do it one more time, see who actually comes out on top. Yeah. That was very smart. And you got fucked on national TV. Naomi, how was it seeing your yeah. twinners go back against each other again? Your twinners. Okay, can I just say this? <laughs> yes, please. If Monet would have said, fuck the alliance and just brought Jada to the finale, 
I already love Monet Exchange, but I would have kissed the fucking floor that she walks on. I will never forget She Devil by Night. Ever. And that would have been the cuntiest revenge. Life's not fair. But it was cute. Not, not a very fun song. So what? That's not, yeah, finale. Trinity but. knew what was up. She packed the wig. She packed the pink wig. She packed the pink wig. <laughs> Everything has been in everybody's favor. Have you not been watching? <laughs> I Judah think... was for, for, for Jinx. You know, you the witchy. Think? Why was it for Jinx? Because Judas. It, because, the, because the music represented the personality and the artist. It absorbed them a lot more. But if you're like, a well-rounded entertainer, you should be, be able to because do when I was Because when I was watching Shay, all I got... Her strong points in that was the choreography parts, the chorus. You know, oh, I know the choreography, so let me do that. But Jinx, that was Jinx. Like, the coat, like, she didn't have to do choreography. She was just fucking spooky and it went. It just made sense. I don't think so. I think Jinx made it her own. Definitely. I think yeah. Jinx made yeah. it Jinx. I don't think it was, like, necessarily because of her look Y'all see, or anything, I get what I'm saying. But Shay really knew that choreo. She was giving backup dancer for sure. But that... <laughs> Any little monsters in here? Asiel? She was giving Asiel work. Um, what was that checker coat? The reveal. It was giving very season 10. We all have a reveal underneath this. <laughs> it was giving NASCAR. Yeah, it was. It was giving us the with the flames. Like, it was we, her like, drag race finale. You know when you're in your Uber and you're like, I'm gonna go watch Drag Race to the driver. No, and I don't he's do that. Like, and he's like, Oh, you like cars? <laughs> it was very that. <laughs> Naomi, you're too much. Okay, Roscoe's. Who won that lip sync? Monet. Monet? Yeah. Trinity. Huh? Oh, I thought y'all you were are me. wild. Y'all are wild. I think Monet just because Monet. But the lip sync. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I want to know. Let's go back. Thank you. Well, well, well. Give a hand to your queen of she done already had hers is Raja. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like that was deserved. Both of those songs were in Raja's wheelhouse and were both created before Evie was born. So <laughs> I saw the Literally. writing. I saw the writing on the wall. I did. I did. What did y'all think of the performance, though? Wait, how old are you? Yes. <laughs> I'm 31 years young. How young are you, Naomi? 28. Let's not go talking age up here with Auntie Batty sitting up here, okay, baby? Thank you. But performance, did y'all agree with that? You guys really like, did you like the <laughs> moment of the wig reveal or did you like the wig reveal? Like, did you like how they slowed it down for her or did you like that? Did you like seeing the cap? That was the only thing wrong with it, right? Yeah. But it was fierce. I don't know if the cap was needed. I, wait, so y'all saw something different? Because I thought her wig had just fell off, like it slid back as she was going. And then she was like, oh, oh my God. And then she pulled it off. Because why the fuck would she have a whole wig up under there if that was, it was that the, was the gimmick? Out. It was like, oh, you thought my wig fell off. No, bitch, I have another wig on. Which is what I wish happened to me on All Stars. <laughs> that wasn't, wasn't the case. You had your natural. Yeah, that was brilliant. Because, bitch, I was like, ooh, bitch, she's like me. Ooh. Yeah. And we then all, I were like, ooh. Yeah, we all were like, oh. You didn't okay. get that? It went, too, it went by too fast. No, I think it, it was good. No, I think it was good. I just yeah, that's, what, I, that's what it was. Yeah, it was that's good. That's what it was. It was good. Because, yeah, why I, would she have another I just don't necessarily ever want to see someone's cap. <laughs> ever. Yeah, like, on stage. Good. Gotcha. What if yeah. it's a mushroom cap? It's not. Like we ne we never saw Roxy Andrews's cap, you know? It's possible. So let's strive for that. But it was fierce. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was. It was a cute color story. combo when the copper came out. <laughs> you were the hardest the hardest judge the ever. Question, the question was, what did we think You're about the it. performance? <laughs> Sisters are doing it for themselves. That's all I remember. That was a uh, that was a real song choice. How many of you actually knew that song? Seven. See, Seven oh my God, I know all of you. <laughs> okay, well, 
It's term. the last one. Evie, Evie it's fine. She'll be back in Vegas. Yeah, soon. they'll be great. <laughs> yeah, she'll will. make them fifty thousand dollars back quick. I don't know. The girls are like leaving Vegas. They're like, because you and Derek are scaring them away. <laughs> No, that was Honestly, we're fine. scary together, so I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Um, but I would love to have Evie back. She is yeah, like, she's good in this. She's so much fun to work with. Um, random question. It's it's the two of y'all, Derek. Who else is on the Vegas cast right now? Right now, I think tonight it's Yara Sophia, Roxy Andrews, Yara. Latrice, Jasmine Kennedy. And Chanel hosting. I think Derek is not there right now. Because yeah. you're not. She has taste. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, also having Roxy Andrews has upped the ante over there. She's my Roxy Andrews is my favorite drag queen Same. of all time. Same. And I know that Roscoe's loves her. I know everyone behind the scenes here loves her. She's She's the moment. She's a professional, baby. She is such a professional. She is. While I'm running late, she is Helping packed you. <laughs> up, wigged, sewing a costume for some other girl, and has plenty of time to spare. She is that bitch. All right, speaking of that, yeah. that and those bitches, let's watch this final SmackDown. Are you guys ready? All yes. right, let's do it. What an amazing season. What do we think, Roscoe? Congrats well to our queen of all queens, Jinx Monsoon. Orping. Um, I was going to say, I, I think the... I, I almost felt bad for Jinx because they made her lip sync Nicki Minaj and I was like girl <laughs> I, I was gonna say it's a wonder rap. got the doll but <laughs> fuck it was eight bars she was fine <laughs> that that was a longer one like 16 she was fine but I know is anyone unhappy with the result <laughs> two people three people four people no I'm, I, I don't trust you what's your name she was the one earlier Crystal Crystal, you got good taste. <laughs> I wanted Monet as well. Same. Not to discredit Jinx, but yeah, I think some people did favor Monet's over Jinx's lip Never. Lipstick. We never discredit Jinx. Yes. But okay. um, personally, I wanted Monet to take it. I did. I just, I felt like this would have been a good full circle moment for her. Right? But she's on Secret Celebrity Drag Race, so she's good. She's good. <laughs> but also, it makes sense because, like, for me personally, my opinion, it's probably wrong for some of y'all, um... Different. Season, Never yes, wrong. There we go. Season three, seven, eight. I feel like we're really fashion forward or like on the runway push that, which Raja was on season three. And then season four, five, and six were very challenge heavy, where Jinx was on season five. So I feel like having those two winners represent this just, it makes sense for me personally. Agreed? It all makes sense for yeah. me. No, I'm just kidding. They all did a wonderful job all season. And I'm just sad it's over. But um, we finally found a wiener. Mm. I thought they all was good. <laughs> I enjoyed the whole season. Like it really, it really was refreshing to watch Drag Race from that point of view. Like not even about like not acknowledging the flaws, but just wanting to show everybody in their absolute best light. Like a celebratory. Those, those, that's yeah. That's what I enjoyed out of it, um, and just the positivity. Like there was no negativity. There was no. They tried to, even in, with the little, you know, the untucks and the, with the plunger and, the, you know, like they try to make like a, a, a little messy storyline, but it still was cute and fun. And it was just great energy. It was, I was really looking forward to watching every fucking Friday. And I never felt like that about any season of Drag Race. And I've seen all of them from everywhere, bitch. Like I've never was this like, oh, I can't wait to see what's next. And I'm happy I got that out of that. Because, bitch, we ain't getting it again. Agreed. Agreed. Back to the I, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it's going to be on the future no. competitors coming in to, like, help elevate the show. Because I think they're doing the best they can. It's going to be on production and the show just to, like, edit that to make it even better than what this is. Because this was such a stellar fucking season. Did y'all enjoy Roscoe's? <laughs> Well, don't forget to stick around at 10.30. Batty and I will be performing on stage, joined by Naomi and Trinity. So, yes, yeah, stick around for Spring. that. Mm -hmm. That's where y'all cheer. That's where you say, I'm going to be here. The fuck? 
much. We have Untucked <laughs> coming up, so get those questions ready. We're going to go through Untucked, and we'll make our way around to have some of those questions answered. Yes, but before we start, I do just have one announcement, because you guys are all wondering what the hell is going to be next. Well, because we love Monet and everyone so much, we're going to be watching Secret Celebrity Drag Race here on yeah. Friday nights with um, Caramel and myself, and we will have a special guest each and every week. So make sure you guys come, and it's going to be the same format as this. We'll perform as well um, after starting at 10.30. So make sure you guys come and join us. We're just going to take a week hiatus. We'll be back in two weeks, okay? All right. So shall we start this Untucked? Let's get into it. It's our final one of the season. Alrighty, let's do it. All right, Roscoe's. It's that point where you get to ask Trinity and Naomi some questions, appropriate questions, please, and be considerate of how long your questions are. Batty and I are gonna make our ways around, so go ahead and put those hands up, and we'll be by shortly. I'm coming all the way back here to you. I see you, boo. Hi, what's your name? We've never met. My name is Jeremy. <laughs> Hi, Jeremy. What's your question? Uh, just a quick one. Are you guys, would you ever do All Stars again? Both of you. Yes, God. <laughs> Definitely. I'll go back on, I will go back on Drag Race as many times as they would allow me to. Hell yeah. Because, like, it really, not, the second time around, my All Stars experience was a great time. You know, you get emotionally connected to the competition, but overall, just being able to, like, showcase just a new side of you, a, we all grow every year. You know, we go through shit and you become a new person and your energy just change. And when people can like grow up with you, and see it. they respect you so much more. And those are your real fans because they were there from the beginning. And I have a lot of those people who saw season six Trinity up until now, you know, and they tell me all the time you've grown so much because they've been attentive. So I just like building families. Yeah, put me back on TV. And as long as it's not cops, shit. <laughs> Naomi? Uh, I think if I could pick the cast, that'd be amazing. <laughs> but it also, if I could hear the cast before I said yes, that would probably dictate my decision for sure. But honestly, the coolest part about doing drag is, and getting older, is you just up yourself each year, and you can look back at your, our yeah. all-stars experience, and I'm like, who the fuck is that bitch? I don't even know her yeah. anymore. So I would love to give like a final, there's never gonna be a final taste, but a more updated taste of who I am on television. Yeah, definitely. In that setting. Our next question right up here, what's your name? Uh, my name is Corey. Hi Corey, who's your question for? Uh, okay, uh, Trinity, you just seem like such a kind soul. You're so beautiful. And Naomi, of course, likes you're beautiful. Uh, my question is actually... What about a kind soul? <laughs> 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 just the legs, he said just the legs. <laughs> You got the lights. Yeah. Okay. So my question is actually for Roscoe. It's like, what spurred the moment of the in memoriam of the uh, <laughs> lawn chairs finally? One more time. What spurred the in memoriam like uh, lawn chair moment? Well, with the crowning of a new queen, we wanted to, um, since times were changing with who was reigning, we wanted to change things up with the stage, and um, we were just tired of the YouTube comments. Honestly, <laughs> we got the furniture. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you so much, okay? Moving on. <laughs> right over here. Hi, what's your name? Efter. Efter. Um, Naomi, how is your relationship now with Nebraska, and have you taught her how to brush her hair? <laughs> Wait, 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 and have you taught her what? Have you taught her how to brush her hair? That's a good fucking question. <laughs> good, good question. My relationship with Nebraska is great. Um, I think there's just something about the tallest people in the room needing to prove that they have... One more inch over the other? Yeah, something, it was something like that, but also like... I don't know. That's I'm a I'm, I'm a little mean at first sometimes. Yeah. I can bite before I purr. <laughs> I'm not really a, a cat person, but yeah, sometimes it's I'm I'm mean at first, and I'm not proud of that. But I was kind of mean to Nebraska, but the bitch needed to brush her hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question right over here, Divas. What's your name? I'm Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Who's your question for? Uh, for the two Rue girls, uh, every year there's a uh, reverberings of Michelle 
and her relationship with the with the girls and her comments and what makes it on what comments make it on the show and what don't and sometimes there there's uh, uh, there's rumors of drama behind the stage so do you think that the comments that make it on on air are actually reflective of what she says or do you think that uh, the the editors make her seem more uh, bitchy or not? Edit. What? Give me, give me the edited version one more time. Um, so how they portray Michelle on the show, is that exactly how she is, or do the producers make her seem more bitchy than what she actually is? I don't... <laughs> I don't think they portray her to be a certain type of way. I think just like any human being, just like all of us, she's judging the competition, but she's entitled to have her favorites too. You know, like she has to like somebody over the other one, you know, otherwise she, how do you pick? How do you judge? So I think, yes, yeah, she has a relationship and she may put some girls on a pedestal, and that's just, I think that's a natural recurrence with all of us. All of us have a friend who is like, that's my friend and I'm gonna kinda, I'm gonna cheer my friend on in a sense. I wanna see this person succeed for whatever reason. And I don't think that makes her like a bad person in a sense. I don't, you think they portray her like that? I don't get that from, I don't get that. No, I think she's a very opinionated lady. Right. Uh, but when competing, I feel like the people who I want to critique and appreciate and talk about my drag are people who do drag. That's how I feel like you get like the that's fair the best opinion. So I always really cared what Rue thought, and yeah, Michelle, girl, <laughs> girl. It, yeah. In the, in the early stages, yes, I did feel like her sitting up there critiquing us was out of line. Today, not at all. She has been all over the world with us. She has she she's been there from the beginning. I, I would appreciate her opinion now because she grew up with this like we did. This is just as much as her baby as us and you kind of, you get it. Yeah. And she being dragged, the bitch be snatched. Yeah. You know, and she not doing nothing less. Like they had, she's in her own type of drag. Right? All of our drag is different. You know, everybody in drag right now, as Rue say, you know, this is how we decide to come out the house and present ourselves to the world. So I don't know. Now, I know I'm not one of her, like she not e emailing me and checking up on me and shit. I'm not gonna say I'm one of her girlfriends, but I think that she has a love for me just as much as she does everybody else. It's auntie type of love. It's like I got a lot of nieces and nephews, bitch, so I'm not gonna, you know, but I got them two that I let stay at my house. The other ones can't come. <laughs> <laughs> Are you referring to what had happened on, was it episode two or three, uh, where she gave Raja a, a comment that was not so Raja was here, and Raja had told us that Michelle had given her a critique that she didn't agree with, and she went off and told her that she's not qualified to be a judge because she's RuPaul's best friend and, and carrying on. So they, I think he was just giving more so if there was any tea like that on your season or that you have heard. I'm sure it was, but I wasn't, like, fucked up about it. You know? Because I, I, I understand this process, and I get that you know that I, there's other people who have relationships with her that I may not have. She gonna always have hold a different love for this individual than she would me. So I just take what I get and I run with it because people don't have to give you none of them at all. She could just flat out not like you and that just be it. So beggars can't be choosers, that's how I see it. All right, I got one more question over here then we'll jump back into the break and then we'll answer a few more questions. So my question is for Trinity. Ooh. As being on the receiving end of one of the most iconic moments in All-Star 6, getting ready for that lip sync for physical, what the hell goes through your mind when you see someone fall 15 feet from the sky <laughs> into a split as you're about to do a lip sync like that? <laughs> oh, I had already knew I lost. <laughs> I already knew I lost. I'm not an acrobat. You know? So I... And... In that moment, it, it really warmed my heart to see that particular person because she deserved that moment. I mean, I fought, but I had no negative fee you know, feeling of, oh, I got beat by her. No, I was a part of her redemption, and that was a really, really dope thing to be a part of because she wore my ass thin. Like, she was ripping stuff off left and right, bitch. I was not prepared. <laughs> I was like, you, you know, but combos. it was a great, it was, it was an amazing thing. And I was so happy to, like, just, like, be in that with her. Because she needed that. 
that meant a lot to her to be back on that show. All right, hold your questions, kids, because um, we're going to jump back in and we'll we be back. We still watching TV? We are. We, we getting paid to watch TV, baby. Shit. I just love Jada. She makes good TV. We're coming back around with some questions, Roscoe's. Get those ready for us. Right up front here, Divas. Hi, what's your name? Um, hello, I'm Annie. Hi, Annie. Who's your question for? Uh, first of all, yes, Nails, Naomi. Um, my question is, do you have a favorite number you used to do or show you were in pre-drag race, and what is it? Uh, do you guys know that girl? Um, it's not P, it's Squirt. You know that? I used to do a drag number and I, um, for Raven's birthday because she loves that so much. And I used to literally, like, had an enema <laughs> in my panty and I used to squirt on a pillow on stage. <laughs> you asked. <laughs> it wasn't my favorite, but it was fun. Nostalgic number or favorite number of uh, yours, Trinity? Um, pre, you said pre drag race? Jesus. Bitch, that's a long time ago. Um, radio. The, the go to or like the great first probably, impression? Yeah, probably I, I did ra Beyonce radio at Black Universe. And, um, Iconic. That was everything. Hair I was 19. And every single thing on stage I made. I made, I painted my prop. I made my costume out of toys, the Terry Mugler replica. I did the dancers' costumes. I choreographed that. I, gee, yeah. And and at, I was like, I was passionate, and I wanted to be, I wanted to be seen. And yeah, it worked out. So that was probably yeah. I should do that again. Look it up because it is literally in the drag bank yeah. history. It really is. It really it's is. the hair choreography. It's the bl the low light black. Uh, like that was the first time I looked back at myself and said, "Oh no, you're a that you're actually pretty good at what the fuck you hey. do." Like <laughs> I I, di I didn't even see. That's when it became Josh and Trinity for me because when I get on stage, it's an out of body experience and she just takes over. And I, then I walk off and I kind of come back too. And it's like, it's crazy. And I don't know if any of y'all drag feel that way, but it's like, yeah. Um, we're it's aware different. that the new Renaissance Act One album dropped less than 24 hours ago. When can we expect you to perform something from that album? <laughs> I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna like fall in love with all the songs and like figure out which ones and I create my own looks and stuff, so I don't know, but it was a complete, I don't, if, you, if you haven't heard it yet, it's such a vibe, and everybody doesn't understand it, and that's good because it wasn't made for everybody. Period. That this, that, this was made for a, a certain particular, unique, neglected group of individuals who just get it, you know, and we're special. And she has two more parts coming out. So maybe you'll get your jazzy Beyonce or your R&B Beyonce, or your angry Beyonce. What the fuck they looking for? I don't know. But yeah, it's a work of art. All right, we, it have, is. A, we have a question right here for you. Oh, hi. Um, <laughs> Shut up the mic. <laughs> my question is for um, either of you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> um, so. I thought it was gonna be me first, so I. <laughs> We're breaking them in, let's go. What's your question? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so when you're trying to find a song to perform as an artist, how do you go about finding that song? Do you feel the song or you go about like how the audience are going to receive the song? Because with all the choices of the song we've seen tonight, it's like, okay, Monet, we know you were supposed to eat and take that, but now Jinx. Like, how do you know the song to perform as, you know, you're trying to sing a song or you're trying to perform? How do you go about to express the song and pick that song? What's the inspiration for the songs that you choose? For me, I think it, I, I like to say I do karaoke drag because sometimes, you know, an artist will do a song and the whole room 
has the same emotion and feeling from that song, can you see it? You know, so I do songs that everybody can relate to and we all can feel the same way because I feel the same way about that song and we all enjoy it together. If I'm going through something personally, then I might do something, you know, based off of my emotion because I need to kind of release that. And like I said, this is my drug of choice, so I can do music and express myself. But I just try to do what I think everybody else is going to enjoy. Um, yeah. Emotion music. <laughs> I definitely like a song yeah. that makes you feel something. Like yeah. when you first listen to it, you have to feel it. And I don't necessarily know how to explain that feeling, but when you're a drag queen or a performer of any kind, you can just kind of like envision yourself on stage. Um, but I do think any song is possible to slay. It's just like, if you're choosing it, I really hope that you feel every syllable and lyric and you're like making your own little music video on stage in a way. Yeah, you, you, you catch every breath, your veins and shit coming out your mouth, you're spitting, it's emo, you know, like you're in that song, you become that song, this your song, you know, you, you own the rights to this for those five minutes. And that's what make people like believe it. If you don't believe in what you're doing, nobody else is. It's energy, it's an aura. Yeah, give me my slides. Let me tell y'all something, these shoes tight. <laughs> so we finna put on these Gucci's and call it a day. Keep talking, Go All ahead. right, we have one more question over here and then we're gonna finish this episode. Hi, no uh, my question is, uh, drag is really expensive, so like, do most Rue Ru girls financially recover from like being on like this, like multiple seasons or like being on their regular season? I think it just depends what they do after. If you work, and the look was cunt, it was worth it. But I don't know. These queens can go fucking broke going on television, for sure. I was lucky enough on season eight, my mom paid for everything because I didn't go to college, so <laughs> she owed me. <laughs> <laughs> but also, you don't have to break, break the bank like Raja did on All Star 6. She said she made pretty much all that within a few thousand dollars, so that's... That's fucking awesome. Like, you don't but, have to go completely broke. But that laser honest. look was like 15 That was 15000 Raja, oh, Raja O'Hara, not oh. Raja. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, different. We're talking about OG. Yeah. Not all winners. Yeah, they cleared the bank for this one. <laughs> all right. Did, let's, did we finish this? But drag is very expensive. Yeah, if you wanted to put right, drag is very expensive. Yeah. It is an investment. Yes. All right, we have five minutes left of this episode. Let's finish this. What a fantastic wrap to a wonderful season. We thank you so much for joining us each and every Friday. We're gonna take a couple more questions, if that's okay. We'll do one or two if anybody has anything that's cute. Let's get it. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name's Justine. Hi, Justine. Um, I was wondering if you could pick anyone to lip sync against, who would you pick? Anyone in the drag race universe? Bob. <laughs> Bob's amazing and it would be like so much fun. Bob's the one. Bob is the one. You gotta think about this one, huh? So many good ones. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know. Like, do I really want to get my ass whooped? Or do I just want to... <laughs> like, cause, bitch, I could pick some people who I know could whoop my ass. Oh, um... <laughs> RuPaul. <laughs> As Giselle Barroyo says, come from behind the panel, bitch. Okay. <laughs> come from behind... No, that would be good, good TV. I, would, I just want to perform with her. I guess not even a comp. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't dare, you know, or come from behind the panel. No, but I would love to just perform with her on stage and just feel that energy. Um, yeah, but it's so many girls, there's so many great lip singers, even from overseas, like amazing performers. So I don't know. That that was a hard question for me. <laughs> no, good, great. That that's re respect. All right, one final question for the evening. Make it juicy. So it's not so much a question as it's a request. My eight-year-old stepdaughter, mm. we got her into Drag Race. She's a little developmentally behind, but she idolizes the two of you, and it was just pure coincidence that you're here tonight. 
Mm. I was wondering if you could just say something inspiring or uplifting for Faith and just tell her that everything is going to be amazing because you guys slay so hard and I want her to live up to be like living your example. You want me to go first? Hey, uh, Faith, this Auntie Trinity. <laughs> this Auntie Trinity, uh, your daddy wanted me to, you know, uh, just reach out to you and tell you that, you know, everything is going to be great and, you know, all is going to be well, but I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> everything may not always be great. Um, life is very, very, very uh, challenging sometimes and unpredictable. And the, all we have is like our faith and how we feel about the people that love us and the people that we love back. And the fact that you have a, a, a father who was smart enough to put you onto one of the greatest shows on television <laughs> just shows that he has faith in your character and who you are gonna be as an individual. Um, I hope one day that I will be able to meet you and you'll be able to like, you know, just tell me your story. We sit down and kick it and stuff of that nature. And uh, yeah, you're a lucky girl because great parents are the start of great queens. Yeah. Well said. Period. God, nice. I love you, Faith. <laughs> Children are the future. Auntie Naomi. Love and legs. <laughs> Naomi Smalls. <laughs> Bitch, that was such an autograph. I love that. <laughs> Love and yes, legs. All right, Roscoe's. Did we have a wonderful time tonight? Yeah. Let's make some noise for our beautiful divas. Make some noise for Naomi Smalls. And please keep it going for Trinity K. Bonet. Please stick around. Our show time is at 10.30, where these divas will be joined by us here on the Roscoe stage. In addition, next week we are taking the week off, and we will be back August 12th with Secret Celebrity Drag Race and special guests to be announced. Secret, secret. Yes. My name is Batty Davis. I love you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much, YouTube. We'll see you next time. I'm Caramel DeVille. Catch me on all socials and financials at KMDeVille underscore official. Until next time. Ciao, Roscoe. See ya.